Welcome to a Feeway Excellence Without Stress. Oh. Hi guys, we are back again on this our awesome, beautiful journey of excelling without stress, becoming smart, becoming very good in physics. And today we are going to continue our topic on waves, which is sound waves. So today we are going to understand everything about sound waves, what it entails, the transmission. I'm going to solve questions on it and you are going to really, really enjoy the class. So let's start sound. Sound is a form of energy arising due to mechanical vibrations. You remember in our previous class, we said that um, mechanical um, waves are waves that requires material medium for their propagation. And we mentioned sound as one of the waves that requires material medium for its propagation. Hence, sound waves require a medium for its propagation and sound cannot travel in, um, cannot travel in a vacuum. It needs a material medium for its propagation. The sound waves are propagated as longitudinal mechanical waves through solid, liquid, and gases. So transmission of sound waves. Wave is transmitted through a material medium such as solid, liquid, and gas. The speed of sound transmitted depends on the state of matter. So ideally, we expect that if there is a transmission of sound through solid, it's supposed to be louder than if it's going through liquid and louder than if it's going through gas. That's what this last statement means, that the speed of sound transmitted depends on the state of matter. So if it's a solid, if it's liquid, if it's gas, so the transmission depends on any of these states. Production of sound. Sound is produced due to the vibration of object, as easy as that. Vibration is a periodic back and forth motion of the particles of an elastic body or medium. It is also named as oscillation. I, 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 we mentioned oscillation in our previous class, which is the toe and fro movement. For example, stress skin of a guitar vibrates to produce sounds. So let's proceed. Propagation of sound. The traveling of sound is called propagation. The traveling of sound from one point to another is called the propagation of sound. When an object vibrates, the particle around the medium vibrates. The particle in contact with the vibrating object is first di displaced from its equilibrium position. Each particle disturbs the other particle in contact. Thus, the disturbance is carried from the source to the listener. You understand that? You know, we already said a wave is a disturbance. So if there is a sound, the, the um, particle in contact with that vibrating object is first displaced. That is, it will move from its equilibrium position. Then it will now transfer its own to another until it reaches the listener. So each particle disturbs the other particle in contact. Thus, the disturbance is carried from the source to the listener. Now, only disturbance produced by the vibrating body travels through the medium, but the particles do not move forward them. So if you understand that, when we're trying to explain wave, we already uh, explained what this is talking about. Why sound needs material medium for propagation? So here yeah, we're going to take an experiment. We're going to explain this experiment using the bell jar to understand why and um, the reason why sound needs material medium for its propagation sound needs a material medium for their propagation like solid liquid or gas to travel because the molecules of solid liquid and gases carry sound waves from one point to another as easy as that so sound cannot progress through the vacuum because the vacuum has no molecules which can vibrate and carry the sound wave so sound is just like a baby that cannot work so it needs something to carry it needs material medium to take it from one point to another. So this is the experiment to show that sound needs material medium for its propagation. So look at it now. This is a bell jar and it's already labeled. We have, this is the bell jar. This is the electric bell. This is the vacuum pump and that vacuum pump is, is where we can take out uh, air and or allow air to go in. So this is the electric connection and this is the switch cock. So now think how the sound produced by drum is heard by us. How is this transferred to our ears? Let's understand this with the help of this experiment. So, and in this experiment, we're going to need a bell jar. What is a bell jar? A bell jar is a laboratory equipment used for creating a vacuum. Its shape is similar to that of a bell. So what do we do? We place an electric bell in the jar. We start popping out the air out of the sealed jar. So this um, electric bell will still be moving. We notice, you know what a bell does now? A bell has this knob that moves from left to right and so on and so forth like the clock, old olden days clock. You remember the pendulum clock? The pendulum clock. Yeah, the pendulum clock. So place an electric bell in the bell jar. 
start pumping out the air of the sealed bell jar. As we start pumping out the air, the sound of an electric bell coming out of the bell jar starts fading. Even though you will notice that the bell is still moving, this um, electric bell jar, this, um, what is it called? This round ball is still moving left and right. That's still supposed to be hearing the sound, but as we pump out the air, we notice that the, the sound starts fading. So he said, start pumping out the air of the sealed bell jar. As we start pumping out the air, the sound of an of the electric bell coming out of the bell jar starts fading. As soon as the vacuum is achieved in the bell jar, no more sound will be audible from the bell jar. However, in the bell jar, the armor, okay, that's the word I needed since the armor continues to eat the gong. Yes, so this armor will continue to eat the gong, but we'll be seeing it um, visually that, oh, this thing is still eating the gong. The armor is still eating it, but we will not be hearing anything. And why? It's because this has been converted to a vacuum. So this means that, sound, that still the sound is being produced, but now we cannot hear it. This is because sound waves always need a material medium to propagate it. In the bell jar, there was no more sound so that was why we were no longer here even though the armor was still eating the gong so now the speed of sound the speed of sound is defined as a distance through which a sound waves move such as compression or refraction travels per unit of time so the speed of sound remains the same for all frequency in a given medium under the same physical condition so this is going to be the formula i told you then that this formula when we were uh, introducing wave 10 i said this formula is very very important v although uh, when we are going to be studying light we might be representing it with c but it's still the same thing c v is still the same thing i'm still talking about the speed of that wave so the speed of sound formula since the speed of sound is a distance traveled by the sound wave in a given time so so simple so the speed in a given time so the speed of the speed of sound can be determined by the following formula v is equals to what lambda f you remember that our lambda is our wavelength and our f is the frequency so the relationship between the speed of sound its frequency and wavelength is the same for all waves yeah the wavelength of a sound is a distance between adjacent compressions or refraction that is for sound waves remember that for transverse wave which we said that is the distance between two successive crests and two successive trough but for longitudinal waves like the sound wave is going to be the um the wavelength of a sound is the distance between adjacent compressions i showed you the compressions or refraction compressions is the place with higher pressure while refractions with lower pressure the frequency is the same as the sources and it is the number of waves that pass a point per unit time you remember now when we talked about frequency oscillations per second so it's the same thing it doesn't change and the period is just the time so questions how long does it take for a sound wave of frequency 2 kilohertz and a wavelength of 35 centimeter to travel a distance of 1.5 kilometers? So how long? When you hear, how long means what? The time. So we are looking for the time here. So we're giving the frequency. We're giving the frequency. We're giving our wavelength. And you know, we have to convert it. So this one is 2,000 hertz. This one is 35 centimeter. We're going to convert it to meter, which is going to be 0 0.35 meter. So this distance, we're going to convert it to meter, which is 1.5 times 1,000, which is what? 1,500 kilometer. So that's what we're going to do. So let's go and check. Let's go to our board very quickly. Or let's just go through it because it's very simple. We've done um, something like this in the previous class. So we know that the speed of sound is given by the formula v is equals to what oh sorry it's not lambda v is lambda f that was a typographical error so that's lambda f so substituting the values in the equation we get that v is equals to lambda you remember our lambda 35 centimeter so when you want to convert centimeters to meter you know you divide it by 100 so that's 0 0.35 meter and by our frequency too our frequency was given as two kilo at so we converted it to hertz and it was what 2000 hertz so when you multiply these two we're going to get 700 meter per second so we've gotten our velocity don't forget that velocity is what displacement over time because we're looking for the, this, the time so now since we have distance and we have velocity definitely we can get our time so our time is what distance traveled over the velocity and so time is going to be equal to we're giving the distance traveled as 1.5 kilometer and we're giving we got our velocity at 700 so when we divided it the time taken was 2.1 second i'm sure that's very easy to understand and there is no issue there or should we 
I'm going here big. So our factors affecting the speed of sound. So we have the density of the medium, we have the temperature of the medium. So when the medium is dense, the molecules in the medium are closely packed, like in solid, which means that the sound travels faster. Therefore, the speed of sound increases as the density of the medium increases. So if you are going from solid to liquid to gas, so we know from this that liquid would uh, this thing be louder and will be faster. So sound tra will travel faster in, in solid than in other states of matter. So the temperature of the medium, the speed of sound is directly proportional to the temperature. So the higher the temperature, the higher the speed of sound. Therefore, as the temperature increases, the speed of sound increases. Simple as ABC. So speed of sound in solid, liquid, gas, and in a vacuum. I've tried to explain this easily. So solid are denser. So basically, we expect that the speed of sound should be faster in solid than in other states of matter and in the vacuum at all at all sound cannot travel um, in a vacuum so that one is out of it so yeah the speed of sound in solid is 6000 meter per second all these are just informations you need to know and learn why the speed of sound in steel is 5100 um, meter per second and so on and so forth so reflection of sound waves remember what reflection is the bouncing back from a plane surface when um, maybe light maybe sound it's a, a plane surface it bounces back that is what's reflection so reflection of sound like light sound also follows the law of reflection it bounces off the surface of solid and liquid and this is one of the ev evidence of that which is echo you know sometimes when you talk in, a, in an empty room you hear whatever it is you are saying back and that is what is called the reflection of sound the bouncing back so it will come back to you too um, um, in, in the same distance the sound heard after reflection from a rigid surface such as a cliff or a wall is called an echo creating persistence of sound even after the source of sound has stopped vibrating the echo is used by birds and dolphins to detect obstacles or to navigate. Very important questions like that can be asked in your jam. So the echo is used by birds and dolphins to detect what obstacles or to navigate. So look at it now. The wave started like this. So that's the first sound waves. Then it came back. That is what is called echo. That's called a reflection. It's, um, it's a plane surface and it's returned by that is reflection. So the same principle is used in sonar that sound navigation and raging technique used in oceanographic studies and so on and so forth to hear a distinct echo sound the time interval between the original and reflected sound must be at least 0.1 second as sound persists in our brain for about 0.1 second the minimum distance for obstruction or reflective surface to air an echo should be 17.2 meter multiple echoes can be heard due to multiple reflections e.g clapping or shouting near a tall building you'll be hearing the echo to be repeating itself ho, 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 ho. and that's what this is trying to say reverberation so reverberation is the phenomenon of the persistence of sound after it has been stopped due to multiple reflections from surfaces such as furniture people within a closed surface these reflections build up with each reflection and decay gradually as they are observed by the surfaces of objects in the enclosed space. It is the same as the echo, but the distance between the source of the sound and the obstacle through which it gets reflected is less in the case of this reverberation. So reverberation is just like repeated echoes. So look at it now. The echo came, then is reverberated to the listener. So advantages of reverberation. Reverberations do wonders when it comes to musical, symphonies, and orchestra us. When the right amount of reverberation is present, the sound quality gets enhanced drastically. This is the reason why sound engineers are appointed during the construction of this world. What are the disadvantages? If a room has nearly no sound absorbing surface, like walls, roofs, and floors, the sound is said to bounce back between the surfaces, and also it takes a very long time as the sound dies. In such a room, the listener will have difficulty registering the speaker. This is because it tends to hear both direct and reflected sound waves. Also, if these reverberations are more excessive, the sound is said to run together with a mere loss of articulation becoming muddy and garbled. So these are the applications of reverberation, um, song producers, chamber reverberator, and plate reverberator. Those are the importance of it. Examples. 
So we're going to solve this example. This example is on echo. So Nita heard the sound of lightning after four seconds of seeing it. What was the distance of the lightning from R? Don't forget, they said the velocity of sound in air is 340 meter per second. So this is Nita. She, she heard the sound of lightning from after four seconds of seeing it. Then what was the distance? So solution. The distance between the lightning and Nita is given as X. Let's not forget that that's the distance. And meanwhile, speed of sound in air is 340 meter per second. Then time taken for the sound of lightning to reach Nita was 4 seconds. And you remember that your V, which is the velocity, is distance over time. And the question is, what was the distance of the lightning from her? So from this relationship, velocity is distance over time. So we can get our what? Our distance. So let's go to our board and quickly solve that. So we have velocity of sound in air, 340 time, 4 seconds, and we are looking for the distance. So, so what were we giving? We are giving the velocity to be equal to 340 meter per second. We are giving our time to be, is it 2 seconds or 4 seconds? Our time was okay four seconds so our time was four seconds so remember that velocity is what distance or displacement over time right so we have our velocity we have our time so to get our distance is just the velocity multiplied by the time so what's our velocity 340 multiplied by 4 and which we got there which was 1360 meter so we are good to go so that's how to get the distance so it means the lightning the building was so they said the question was what was the distance of the lightning from mars so we've gotten it as what 1360 meter so let's go to the next one a boy is standing between two walls so anytime you are reading questions in physics just try to like visualize what we are trying to say. They said the wall closest to him is at a distance of 360 meter. If he shouts, he hears the first echo after four seconds and another after two seconds. What is the velocity of sound in air? Then what is the distance between the two walls? So writing out our parameter, the first echo, they said he heard the first second, four seconds after the, um, the distance said a boy is standing between two walls. The wall closest to him is at a distance of 360 meters. If he shouts, he hears the first echo after sec four seconds and another afterwards two seconds. And you know that the, the, the sun is going to be reflecting between the two walls. It will hit the first wall and come back. So they said the first time he shouted, the echo was heard four seconds after. Then the next was heard two seconds after. So the distance traveled by the sound in this four second is what? 360 by 2. You remember, you know how we got this 360 by 2? Echo, is two, it, it goes forward and backward. So if the first one was 360 and it's coming back to him, 360. So definitely that is the distance, 360 times 2. And that was how we got this 360 by 2. So then the velocity of the sound, which is the distance over time, will be 180 meter per second. Let's do that on the board. so don't forget that this is the first journey of the sound and the second journey of the sound so touching the wall these are the two walls and he had it four seconds after so let's check the distance that we were giving so we're giving Okay, at a distance of 360 meters. So, so, 360. So, definitely the distance. So, we're giving 360 meters. So, times 2. So, that will be 360 times 2, which is equal to what? So, 360 times 2 is 720. Sorry for the error. 720. So, we now have our velocity is what? Distance. 
over what over time so that's going to be equal to 720 divided by 4 and that's going to give us 180 180 Okay, that's one. That's 180 meter per second. So therefore, the velocity of sound in air is 180 meter per second. So we already have the velocity. So now, imagine the time taken to hear the second echo. So if the first one was heard after four seconds, the second one after two seconds. So the addition of the two of them will be what six seconds. So now. The distance traveled in this six seconds is also given by 2x. You know why? Because it's two times. So we have our time now for this second journey. You know how we got this one? We have 360, 360, which gave us 360 times 2, which gave us 1, um, 720. And we divided it and our, our V was 180. V was 180 meter per second. So in the second one now, so if it took another two seconds, for that one to get to him. so it means the total time was four seconds plus two seconds which is equals to what six seconds right and the distance is always twice so 2x is the is still the distance is equals to what remember that v is equals to d over t so our d now is what 2x still the same 2x is equals to v times the t we have our v already and we have our t so 2x will now be equals to what is our v our V is 180, right? Times the T now, which is 6. So to get the distance X, it will be 180 times 6 over 2. So 180 times 6 divided by 2 is what? 180 times 6 divided by 2 is going to give us 540. So our X is 540. So our X, our X now is equal to what? 540 meter. So now the, the question is, what is the distance between the two walls? So the distance between the two walls will be the addition of the distance of the first wall, which is 360 plus 540. And that is equal to 900 meter. As simple as that. So I hope you understand what we've been explaining. So the first one was the time it took him to hear the first echo, which was two, which was four seconds. And don't forget the distance is always two because it's two X. So actually the formula for echo is actually V. It's not really echo, but the, the velocity is V is equals to two X over T. And we know normally velocity is um, distance or displacement over time. But when it comes to echo, because you would hear a reflection because of the reflection. So that is why it's two of the distance divided by time and that was what we've been doing all through the examples we were solving and so we've gotten the distance between the two walls and this is your assignment thank you